So in this video, we're going to do some system of equations. Now, there are several ways that you can actually solve system of equations. One of those is graphically, uh, which I'm not going to do in this video. I'm going to stick to the algebraic ones because that's where people have tend to have the most trouble. Um, and there's two ways, substitution and elimination. So the substitution method I only use in situations like this one where one of the equations is already solved for one of the variables. So in this case, we have that situation. Oh, sorry about that. We have that situation right here. Okay, because we have one of the equations is y equals blah blah blah. If that's the case, then since y is equal to 2x minus 6, that really means they're interchangeable, right? They're equal to each other. So what we can do is take the 2x minus 6, and we substitute it in for y into the other equation. Now, once I do that, then I wind up with negative 5x plus 4 times y has to equal to negative 12. And I know that the y is the 2x minus 6. Okay, so I'm going to make that substitution and then simplify. So we're going to use our distributive property, and we're going to multiply this 4 by all of that stuff in there. So that's going to be plus 8x minus 24. Okay, now I'm going to combine my like terms, and the only like terms I have are the negative 5x and the 8x. So if I combine those, I'll get 3x. So now I have 3x minus 24 equals negative 12. So remember, when we're solving equations, we always just simplify each side of the uh, equations first. Then we worry about moving stuff around. Uh, so again, always start off uh, undoing the addition, subtraction stuff. So we only have this minus 24, so I'm going to add that to both sides. And that leaves me with 3x equals 12. Now we divide by the 3 because it's 3 times x. And that's going to give us then x equals 4. So that gives us one of the variables. Now we have to take that and substitute it back into either one of the first equations to find um, what y is equal. It's easiest if we use the one that's already solved for that other variable. So in this case, I'm going to substitute it back into y equals 2 times x minus 6. We'll put that x equals 4 right in there for the x. So that's going to be y equals 8 minus 6, so y is going to equal 2. Now, really, you're supposed to write these answers at ordered pairs. I know sometimes in Alex and stuff, it just says x equals y equals. Uh, but in reality, we should write the answer this way. So you will see uh, a lot of times written as an ordered pair because that's what they're supposed to be. So that's the substitution method. Substitution. Okay. And as I said, I only use this when it's solved for one of the variables. The other method is the elimination, elimination method. And I use it in every other situation. So I'm going to do two of those. <clears throat> and so it may start off looking, you know, something like this. The thing that you really, really want to be careful about is that you need all of your columns uh, to kind of line up. So you want your x's in a column, your y's in a column, your equals in a column, and your constants in a column. You want all that stuff lined up. Now what you're going to look for is, with any luck, you're going to have one of the variables already have the same coefficient. It might have a different sign, or it might be the same sign, like this has a positive 1y and a negative 1y. That's fine, they might be both positive. So what you're going to do is you're going to add these two equations together or subtract. Whichever one eliminates one of the variables. So for this one, I am going to add both equations together. So we're going to add those. And I choose the addition because 1y plus a negative 1y gives me the 0. And that's what I'm looking to happen. So if I add these two go up, 8 minus 11 will be a negative 
3x. I can't write very well. And my computer's doing silly stuff. So negative 3x. And just for emphasis, I'm going to put the 0y here. And then 21 plus a negative 27 would be a negative 6. Now be really careful about your signs, okay? Now normally I wouldn't write the 0y down, but I'm just trying to emphasize that that, because 0y is just 0. <clears throat> so what we have, if I simplify, would be negative 3x equals 6. And so now we can just divide both sides by negative 3. Now, once you do this step, it should always be a one-step equation left to solve. So that's going to be x equals 2. And now we'll go back to either one of the equations that we started with to find out what y is equal to. So I'm going to use the first one. So 8 times x plus y equals 21. So we know x is equal to 2, so we'll make that little substitution. So 16 plus y equals 21. We'll subtract the 16 from both sides. And what does that leave me with? y is equal to 5. So our solution would be 0.25. x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 5. Now, uh, one more example. And I'm just going to make this one up. So let's say we have 3x plus 2y equals 6. And 5x plus 3y equals 10. Now, this one may come up with fractions and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just making it up. So I look at it and I go, oh, there's none of them that have the variables with coefficients that match up. So I have to make it match up. So the first thing you have to decide is whether you want to get rid of x's or eliminate the y's. It doesn't matter which. Okay. So I think I'm going to eliminate the x because we did y last time. Okay. So what you do is you take the first equation, and you multiply it by whatever the coefficient is for the second equation. So since the second equation has a 5 in front of the x, I'm going to multiply everything in the first equation by 5. So that's going to give me 15x plus 10y equals 30. Then I'm going to take the second equation and multiply it by whatever is in front of x in the first one. So in this case, there's a 3 in front of the x in that first equation. So I'm going to multiply everything in the second equation by 3. That's going to be 15x plus 9y equals 30. <clears throat> okay, so when you do this, because of the way we're choosing to multiply by those other numbers, you're always going to get the things to match up. So now my 15x's match up, I'm going to subtract, because I can add or subtract, whichever one gives you 0. And so 15 minus 15 is going to give me a 0x. 10 minus 9 is going to give me an, a 1, positive 1y. One 30 minus 30 is going to give me 0. So my equation, when I simplify, is just going to be y equals 0. Oh, man, that turned out really nice, didn't it? <coughs> Now, if y has a different coefficient, of course, you would divide at that point. Okay. Now, go back to one of the original two equations and substitute 0 in for y. So, we're going to have 3x plus 2 times y equals 6. We're going to stick the 0 in for that. Now, when I simplify, that's just going to be 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. And what do we have? Voila, y equals 2. So then our solution is the point, um, I, I wrote y, that's supposed to be an x. So x is equal to 2. So what do we have? The point 2, 0 would be the solution to that system of equations. So these are a little bit trickier if your coefficients don't match up. Uh, you just have to make them do that. Remember, you can do things to equations as long as you do it to both sides, right? So that's what I did up here. I multiplied this side by 5, and then I multiplied that side by 5. I just didn't kind of write it out. I multiplied both sides of this equation by 3. So we have the same equations. They just look a little different. Now we can eliminate when we add or subtract.
So good luck and let me know if you need any more.